So before I get started, I do want to thank the lovely people over at Game Samba for actually sending me a bunch of codes for their game Tokyo Ghoul Dark War. For full transparency reasons, I am not getting paid to say this, they were kind enough to send me a bunch of codes to give to my viewers, to give to you guys. So basically, Tokyo Ghoul Dark War is a mobile game on Android and iOS which is completely free. Uh, there is a link in the description as well as in the comment section below where you can download it, try it out for yourself. If you are a fan of the game, I do have a bunch of codes to give to you guys. These codes basically help boost uh, everything that's going on in your game right now, I'll probably give you specific items as well. So if you do play the game and you are interested in a code uh, or you're just starting out and you maybe want a code to help uh, boost your progression in the game, you know, if you're just starting, all you have to do to enter is basically leave a comment down below with the words Tokyo Ghoul Dark War as well as your Twitter or a place where I can contact you. Twitter would be preferable, but if you are in my Discord, which is also in the description, I can send it through there. So if you do want a code to give you some goodies in the game, uh, all you got to do is put Tokyo Ghoul Dark War somewhere in your comment section and leave a, a Twitter handle or, you know, let me know on Discord or something like that. And I'll send it to you privately. I'm going to give out a bunch of codes. You're probably going to see this on a bunch of different videos. So I have a lot. So once again, thank you, Game Samba, for uh, helping me give back to the lovely people of the Tokyo Ghoul Dark War community. So I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that Tokyo Ghoul Re is a completely different narrative to its predecessor, Tokyo Ghoul. So today we're going to go through and point out some of the specific details that change Tokyo Ghoul Re uh, from Tokyo Ghoul specifically. So obviously the first biggest thing is the story. With Tokyo Ghoul Re, you have a story that focuses heavily on psychological horror, and I have already made a video on this, so if you are interested, go check it out. This is kind of like a main drive for this story. It's something that Ishida put a lot of emphasis into, and he really wanted to, I guess, flesh out the beauty and horror, the general, you know, insanity of said psychological trauma, and, and the way he weaved it into the overall narrative, how he weaved it into Kaneki as a character, was extremely well done. When you get to Tokyo Ghoul Re, you don't have that anymore. And it's probably one of the reasons why people aren't the biggest fans of Tokyo Ghoul Re. Instead of Ishida uh, solely focusing on psychological horror once again in TG Re, instead he's kind of given it a back step. Instead he's kind of implemented uh, some more forwarding issues to help give you a better perspective of the said world, uh, the CCG, and it's basically just an overall different perspective. Ishida is telling you both sides of a story, if you will. So if if you were to kind of break it down into parts, Tokyo Ghoul focuses on the ghoul side and Tokyo Ghoul refocuses more so on the CCG side as well as the world aspect, if you will. So with Re, there is a, a couple of different things that uh, I guess weave into the narrative and weave into Hayase as a character and what it kind of pushes him throughout the story. When I mentioned perspective before, the first thing that you get kind of a good concept of straight off the bat is how the CCG functions, how they deal with ghoul threats and how they deal with the world in general, how they are obviously like a police force for the supernatural and they should theoretically be playing a neutral ground. You know, they are trying to protect humans. That is their ultimate goal, to slay ghouls and protect the rest of the world. It's not as simple as that, however. You know, throughout this story, you see a lot of corruption through the CCG, a lot of different agendas and different moralities that ultimately skewer what the CCG was built upon in the first part in Tokyo Ghoul. So what was kind of pitched as this pretty investigator police force has ultimately been a lot darker in the background and Tokyo Ghoul Re really goes through the effort of trying to flesh that out, dropping the psychological horror for more so a perspective in the world, contrasting the ghoul world in part one with the CCG and corruption of said police in part two. To spearhead this narrative, obviously we have a different version of Kaneki. We have Hayase, a persona that is kind of warped into him to help uh, obviously the situations he faced at the the ending of Tokyo Ghoul and to push him throughout the CCG industry. He is a leading hand, he's very close to a lot of different people, Arima, Akira, Suzuya, etc, etc, and he works very closely with them, not really knowing of his past, which gives you a good idea of what's to come in the future. These memories that are kind of closed away inside of him will boil over and he will evidently come to remember the things he's done in the past, which ultimately changes him as a character, bringing back that psychological horror aspect. But in the early stages of Rewe, 
focus purely on the CCG, the missions, how they're structured, uh, how they handle ghoul scenarios, uh, as well as how Hayase kind of adapts with the group that he is in. So in case of the story, we've shifted away from a sole focus of Carnegie, this tragic human turned into ghoul, thrown into a world of despair to Tokyo Ghoul Re, with Hayase sitting comfortably in the CCG, uh, surrounded by a lot of different people. And it's kind of completely flipped the narrative, if you will. It gives you a really good perspective on both sides of the story, uh, as well as kind of fleshing out the world in general uh, from the CCG's point of view and using Hayase as kind of like a spearhead for that. Uh, another thing that's differed from Tokyo Ghoul is actually its characters and how it plays a lot more emphasis on characters in Tokyo Ghoul Re. So straight off the bat, like I said, Hayase is, you know, a completely different person. His mentality is basically wove into him forcefully. He does not remember the past that he used to have, but he does have a good group, right? And this group is, you know, quite a supporting group. It's like a role that, you know, Hayase has never experienced before in his previous scenarios, in his previous memories. So this situation is very new to Kaneki or Hayase. And from this, he learns a lot. He learns how to lead and be kind of, a, you know, a fatherly figure of his own, if you will because he's obviously controlling and working together as a unit trying to kind of have like this mini family if you will he pays a lot of close attention uh, to his underlings and supports them in any way possible Hayase kind of takes a back step however when they're not playing on his mentality and the memories that are slowly creeping forward back inside of him kind of focus more so on his underlings you know the group that he is leading uh, for example Yuri Yuri is a character that goes through a, a tremendous amount of development throughout the entire of Re. To this day, like 170 chapters later, Yuri is still getting like incredible development. And when you start off reading Tokyo Ghoul, you don't necessarily even have to like Hayase. You can like Yuri, you can like Shirazu, Matsuki, Seiko. Like there's a handful of characters there that get, you know, an optimal amount of development for you to like them and enjoy them. And this is something that Tokyo Ghoul, at least originally, didn't necessarily have, at least as a, you know, a primal focus in the story. Yes, we had Enteku. Yes, we had Tokura, you know, Old Man Yoshimura. We had an abundance of characters, Tsukiyama, in the story, but they never really played a central focus surrounding Kaneki and developing with him. They would develop more so in their own time or, you know, specifically away from Kaneki, even though they are part of, like, his little Enteku group. But a lot of the characters or underlings under Kaneki or Hayase's group play a lot more of a spotlight, you know, because they help also develop Hayase in the future. They help shape him and, you know, build him up in that direction. But because we're getting it from the CCG's perspective, we play a lot more emphasis on these said characters such as Yuri and Shirazu and whatnot and this is an incredible thing to see because it's very refreshing in a story as you know psychologically driven as Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re to have someone like Yuri who is not necessarily a broken character but has a lot of morality issues has a lot of personal issues a lot of hidden agendas and to kind of not focus on psychological horror and more so just the corruption of oneself and you know wanting to better himself at all costs and there is a lot of things that go into into Yuri's character, and he's only the beginning. Shirazu, Matsuki, Seiko, they all have different traits to them, they all have different morals, they all have different uh, goals and achievements that they want to get, uh, especially Matsuki, she's one of my favorite characters, and just how uh, much emphasis Ishida wanted to put on Matsuki's character, and the, the struggle that that person went through, and how much it's fleshed out. A lot of people call Matsuki Kaneki V2, but it's a whole different perspective, it's a whole different situation, it's a lot more personal, and it's it's very torturous uh, for Matsuki as a character, and that's kind of why I love her. It's a lot more personalized with Kaneki's underlings, and they're, it's a lot more prolific. They play more of a main role than Hayase himself, if you will. Something that I believe is completely different to Tokyo Ghoul. There's obviously another thing that propels Tokyo Ghoul Re, but it's actually hidden under the surface. So Tokyo Ghoul was realistically just the beginning. It really was just building Kaneki's character and kind of creating a foundation for the next story to come, which is obviously Tokyo Ghoul Re. What happens in Re, however, is completely low key. You get the surface of the story, but everything lying underneath is basically just bubbling and waiting to boil over uh, to ultimately showcase a much bigger world. There are characters in the story that have been hidden for a very long time that come out to play in Tokyo Ghoul Re, especially 
especially Arima, he gets a, a lot of spotlight. We find out about his motives and what he's trying to do. We find out about the corruption uh, of the CCG and, and how they're not as nice or, you know, realistic as they seem to be. They're a lot darker and they're run by like a hidden family in the background that has a lot of history to that said family, as well as a, another organization that's connected to the CCG known as V, who play a vital role in kind of exploring the world in general. And we slowly shift from the beginning phase of Tokyo Ghoul Re into politics. You guys know me, I love political warfare. Now, Tokyo Ghoul Re doesn't feature political warfare to that extent, but it does have politics driven through it. The narrative for the CCG, the Washu family, and the V organization all kind of entwine into this one big clusterfuck, and it all hides under the surface. It all hides directly in plain sight, which is the greatest thing about it, because you read Tokyo Ghoul Re and it's like, oh, you know, it's a pretty good story. You know, we're, we're seeing a different perspective. We've got Hayase, we've got all these other characters, but underneath, we have all these different motives building, all these different agendas and situations and scenarios that once it gets to a certain point, you know, the breaching point, the cracking point, is when everything kind of releases onto the world and it, it just showcases, right? When you get to that point, it just showcases how massively corrupt, how massively crazy and complex this world truly is. The morality for the CCG and the Washu and the V are completely different and obscured in ways that changes the story, it changes the view of the story once again. You know, CCG aren't just these innocent investigators that are helping the human world. The Washu has an incredibly deep and rich history directly founded into, you know, the ghoul history. The V organization, you know, a completely mysterious group that somehow, some way has all of this information, knows exactly what they're doing, but also play a vital role in propelling some sort of mystery into the story and how they know all this information and everything in between. Basically playing the counterpart to the CCG and trying to keep a balance in the ghoul world. But what gives them the power to do that? Why do they know all this important information? Why did Arima choose Carnegie to begin with? Why did Arima approach Carnegie and basically raise him as the persona of Hayase and showcase the CCG's perspective? This is the hidden stuff that is in Tokyo Ghoul Re. It's profound, it's complex, and you don't know about it till it hits ultimately a certain point. Now, I know the community is a little bit split in terms of what they like. Do they like Tokyo Ghoul? Do they like Tokyo Ghoul Re? Uh, honestly, it, it's kind of weird to look at Tokyo Ghoul Re as like a quote-unquote sequel. You know what I mean? It's a continuation of the story, but it's not like completely different. It's more so a different perspective. I feel like a lot of reason why people don't like Tokyo Ghoul Re potentially as much as its predecessor is because of how it's changed its narrative, how it no longer focuses on psychological horror and kind of opens up and expands the world in every single aspect. In that case, I have a lot of respect for Ishida in completely changing his story, basically, taking its foundation and skewering it away so it tailors into Tokyo Ghoul Re and how he adapted it further on throughout the years. It seems like it's very hard to write a sequel just as successful as the predecessor, especially with a completely different story and a completely different theme. If you like Tokyo Ghoul more than Tokyo Ghoul Re, that's fine. If you like Tokyo Ghoul Re more than Tokyo Ghoul, that's completely fine. But they're almost two completely different stories, but share the same world and characters, if you will. Two completely different perspectives, and I feel like the way Ishida has approached Tokyo Ghoul Re can be very down at times. You know, that he gets caught up in a lot of different things, and it's not as one way, per se, as its predecessor. There's a lot of revolving parts, and it gets clustered, and, and it ultimately kind of brings down the writing uh, a lot more. But in that case, there is moments that are so profound and interesting and just complex in general that are completely different to its predecessor that it makes up for it. With a lot of highs, you have a lot of downs. Same with Tokyo Ghoul, you have a lot of highs, you have a lot of downs. You know, there's good moments, there's bad moments, there's poorly written moments, there's poorly drawn moments, and that's just any series in general. I think a lot of people just kind of put Tokyo Ghoul Re lower than Tokyo Ghoul because it's a completely different thing. Because they think that, you know, psychological horror is completely gone, and you're not entirely wrong, but they look at it from the wrong perspective. It's not like Ishida has forgotten to put psychological horror in, it's more so that he he is driving a different perspective. He wants you to view the CCG and the other side of everything. There's obviously two sides to every single story, and the fact that Ishida is portraying said CCG side in Tokyo Ghoul Re, I feel like is a very fascinating thing with the complete underlying plot. And then when you get to about round chapter like 80 to 100, that's when everything completely skewers. Everything that you knew is just completely wrong, 100% out of proportion. That's when the story really gets going, and it's kind of like, whoa, like this world is way 
way bigger than I originally thought. And I feel like Ishida has done quite a good job for a story that started off with psychological horror to completely shifting the narrative, not realistically dropping in quality or even sales wise and still having that um, massive audience and attention to detail that he puts into his story. So that's basically it. Not really sure why I wanted to make this video, but uh, I felt like I, I guess, wanted to point out the differences between both stories, Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re. So with that being said, I have a question. What is your favorite series and why? Do you like Tokyo Ghoul because of its psychological horror or do you like Tokyo Ghoul Re because of the said corruption of the CCG and basically getting a overall different perspective from the predecessor, which mind you is a very, very different difficult thing to do. Not many series do it because it ultimately kills the series. It's like having a romance series and then the next part is not even romance at all. It's a shonen or a tragedy or whatever. So it's very difficult to do and to do it successfully with the same attention to detail is also extremely difficult to do. So with that being said, I'm actually going to end the video off here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.